Hey, it's Rye with Paragon, and today we're going to talk about one of my all-time favorite pieces that we have produced thus far. This is our Deckard Hero Elite Blaster, or our Blade Runner 2049 Deckard's Hero Elite Blaster. It's a lot of words. It's a big word salad to punctuate one point, and that is, as far as our replicas go, this is our top tier piece. This is the one. This is the $1,000 replica. The tooling that was used for this is the exact tooling that was used to produce the piece that you see in the film Blade Runner 2049. So when you see Deckard with his blaster, when you see Harrison Ford with his prop, that is the exact same thing you see here. The exact same tooling was used to produce this piece that you see in the film. Now, we've used the same tooling for this to make a injection motor model kit. We've used the same tooling to make our uh, Blade Runner Water Blaster, and if you guys have spent any bit of time, you know, looking at our videos, you've seen where we painted a couple of those up, and they make some really nice cosplay, you know, tier replicas. I mean, only limited by the amount of work that you're willing to, uh, you know, put into them. So here we have, like, I, I'm, as I'm messing with this, I'm just fawning over it like I always do. As much as I get to handle these, I just never really get tired of playing with them. And as I've said a million times, if you've if the words have ever come out of your mouth that, hey, I might really like to have one of those, or I think I want one of those, and really the only thing stopping you from is not having held one, when I uh, show these off at shows and people are on the fence and they actually get to hold one, I drop one of these in their hands and watch their arms go, uh, that's when the fever sets in. That's when they truly get infected. And, of course, they buy one. Every single time we go to shows, I'm guessing, like, okay, what's the attendance at a show? How many of these should I take? And I never take enough. They always sell out at shows. So I get it. When you see them online, it's uh, kind of tough to appreciate how heavy they are. They're, like, a little over two pounds, maybe two and a half pounds of mixed media, lots of metal and moving parts. And, of course, the uh, magazine here is removable. That's how you get to your batteries. And... Like we played with the cartridge. These um, dummy rounds are also metal. These are uh, brass and metal and really substantial feeling. I mean, um, they've got some heft to them. What you see here is um, how the prop looks when you open it up. In fact, this is uh, in a bag when you actually get your replica in. And that's because much like a real firearm, uh, it's oiled. When you've got metal rubbing on metal, you want to... Make sure all your parts can move cleanly, freely from one another. And over time, when it's setting on its side, we just don't want any of the oils to uh, get into your foam. But I just opened this one for the sake of the video, and you can uh, see how clean and pretty it is. But again, just a little bit of caution there. We want to make sure that uh, everything stays clean and pretty for you. But the oil is, um, yeah, it's necessary to make sure that everything stays clean and moving like you want it to. So, you know, periodically you want to oil a couple of these parts. Nothing heavy, just um, in time. So you, most of you guys know uh, the mixed media construction that we're talking about. All this is metal through here, your little knobs and so forth, and um, your moving parts. Again, your cylinder opens, your magazine's removable, the bolt can be charged, and so on. And then the uh, faux amber grips, hopefully you can see them here. You can see the skeleton of the uh, blaster through here, the tension springs, and so on. Just such a striking piece. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I just realized that I hadn't really spent a lot of time talking about this. I mean, we mention it in videos, of course, but it's, it's easy, to, easy to presume everybody who buys one of these things knows everything about it. But when you get it, all your uh, cartridges will, of course, be bagged and placed here. The blaster itself will be bagged. There's a sheet of foam that goes on top of this. And then your um, little magazine, uh, your little uh, flyer will seat right on the top here and then ultimately the entire piece comes bagged and tied off with an obi like you see here there'll be this uh, stop read that first that is because when people get these things man they get a little excited a little overzealous they start pulling triggers and it's the rear trigger that cycles the cylinder to move your cartridges the front trigger while spring loaded it's just ornamental it doesn't actually do anything but like i said some people really get in there and start laying into that with a little bit of grunt, and we just want to caution everybody that that is ornamental. The rear trigger is actually the one that does the work. So one last look at this piece, and I spared you guys the total unboxing video, but again, 
everything comes bagged and tagged like this with the OB. There'll be some foam inserts on each corner, and then that is inside of a triple cor corrugate box to protect everything. I mean, it's it's bulletproof, huh? No, no pun intended. See what I did there? Uh, but the OB strip, people do ask about the OB and how to get it off of the box without actually tearing it. Uh, if you just move slowly with it, just ever so gently when you're peeling it open, you should be able to get it off there without wrecking it. Uh, but some people have said, do I razor cut it? Do I tear it off? Well, you can do whatever you want. It's yours. But I really like Obies, so I spent a little time just taking mine off. So we'll give you one last look at everything here. And by the way, with this thing being a thousand bucks, um, we mentioned this in another video just a week or so ago. Uh, if you guys have any questions, our phone number is on our website. You can call in. Amy's usually manning the phones. You know, she'll, she'll, answer any question that you have. But if you want to get really techy, really detailed about it, and you want to talk to me, this is Rye, by the way, um, I'm happy to call you. If you leave a time, you know, and a number, and you want me to hit you back, I'll call you and talk, you know, talk you to death about this thing. We'll nerd out about it. And I'm happy to, uh, you know, answer any questions you have, assuage any concerns, you know, whatever. Um, you know, uh, some people are like concerned how they're going to get it to them, that sort of thing. Uh, so we can talk about all that. But Whatever you need, I'm happy to help you guys out. So one last look at everything. And um, there you go. So I spared you, like I said, the cardboard part of the unwrapping. And then you ultimately end up with this. And uh, that's it. So you guys have a good afternoon. Hit me with any questions. Uh, we'll do this again on some other items that we've kind of uh, not really spent a lot of time on. So this is the first of a number of videos over the uh, next few weeks. So be sure and follow us on Insta and, uh, you know, like, subscribe and all those other corny things people say. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Oh, man, I forgot to say it. 1,000 pieces. That's what we set the edition size of the Deckard Hero Elite at. And we'll never exceed that. Regardless of a given props uh, popularity with us, uh, we never do a 2.0 or a cousin of or anything like that. Uh, we truly try to keep everything collectible. So... 1,000 pieces is the edition size for this replica, and that's all there will ever be. Okay, I'm gone for real this time. Thanks, guys. Bye.